Hey guys, Gabe Seymour here with Pest Patrol. Today we're gonna show you how to inspect your crawl space to make sure that you get the most money out of your home sale. Let's do this. So the first thing you're gonna do is pop open your crawl space hatch. Usually it's located in the floor of a closet on the interior of the home or sometimes on the exterior of the house. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you keep yourself safe so wear the appropriate protective equipment. It's gonna include things like gloves of some sort, potentially a Tyvek suit, depending on how bad it is, uh, a mask. I would use at least an N95 mask, but potentially consider getting a P100 respirator as well. And then some sort of light source. You can wear a headlamp, do a flashlight, whatever you need to make sure that you can see around in there and uh, do what you gotta do. The main things you're gonna be looking for in a crawl space inspection are as follows. Rodent droppings, rodent urine, torn down insulation and marks in the dust on the vapor barrier. And that indicates at least at a previous time that you had an infestation of some sort. If that is the case, then keep in mind that there may be live rodents down there with you as you're doing your inspection and act accordingly. If at any point during the inspection process you feel uncomfortable taking the next step, reach out to a professional like us or another pest control or crawl space company and we'd be happy to come out and do a free inspection and make sure you're totally taken care of. The best way to locate entry points is to do a full inspection of the exterior perimeter of the home. The most common crawl space entry points are as followed. Broken bent screens, particularly around the air conditioning unit, and burrows that go directly under the foundation and into the crawl space. Any broken bench screen should be covered up with quarter inch mesh. Be careful that you use quarter inch steel mesh and not half inch steel mesh as half inch will be too large and will make it so that mice and young rats can squeeze through the hole and still gain entry into your crawl space. Here's a pipe that was put through. They cut a hole to put it through but then they never sealed everything up around it. Don't just use foam blocks because rodents can chew right through the foam. You need steel behind it. Same thing here, if you install a pipe through there, you need to make sure everything around there on the upper left is sealed. The next step is to ensure there's no burrowing under the foundation. If you do find burrows, and I'll attach a couple pictures of what that looks like. A couple examples here of a burrow going right underneath the foundation, and then uh, here we've got same thing going right underneath a patio slab. They can burrow right through that. You're gonna need to seal those up with either gravel or cement. Avoid things like pea gravel and stuff. Rodents have an easy time digging right back through that and it won't do you any good. The next step is to trap your current infestation. Now it's a good idea to set traps either way because you just never know. There may be activity down there and you need to know about it so that you don't do all this work and then have a nest come back and uh, be active again. We recommend the Victor Pro traps. They'll serve you right. Bait them with peanut butter. If in this situation you realize it's not rodents or not just rodents, but actually some other form of wildlife like raccoons or possums or feral cats or something, you need to install a one-way door. Now, if you're not gonna use a one-way door, you can also use a live catch trap, like a have a heart style trap to catch the raccoon or the possum or the feral cat. This is a much easier solution. It's gonna allow you to just kind of set it, let the animals leave, and then you can do your thing. You basically install it on an entry point. The rodent or the wildlife goes through the door, the door closes, and they're not able to regain entry into the home. This is a great tool to use. For wildlife, you need to make sure you don't have an active nest with babies in it. If you do have babies down there, you need to remove them and place them outside the home near where you had the one-way door so that the mother can come and retrieve them. Now it's time for the crawl space remediation. This is really important to prevent future infestation. And if you're selling your house, you have to make sure that you get all the droppings, all the soiled vapor barrier, all the insulation removed, along with sealing up the entry points. Otherwise, the inspector is gonna call it and you're gonna end up having to pay me to come out and inspect it for you. Once all that's complete, you should be good to go. I always recommend setting a couple traps at the end of the service, just to be sure that you've gotten completely everything and that you can sleep well at night knowing that your home is secure and that your problem is completely solved. At this point, if you end up putting your home on the market and getting it inspected, the inspector is not gonna call any entry points and they're not gonna call any rodent droppings or wildlife in the crawl space. You can be assured that you did all that you can do to make sure your home is taken care of. 
I hope this is really helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. You can call or text us anytime at 503-985-6523. You can also visit pestpatrolpdx.com for more information. Thanks for watching.